We've all been there before. You start losing weight, you go on a new diet, the weight's coming off, the weight's coming off, everything's great. And then you hit the dreaded plateau. You're still on your diet, but the weight is just not coming off. What can you do to get through that dreaded weight loss plateau? We'll cover that coming right up. Stick around till the end. I'm going to share how Chuck was able to keep losing weight. So the first thing you can do is you can keep doing what you're doing. So sometimes with diets, it just takes a little bit of time. Your weight isn't always going to keep going down. It's going to come off very quickly at the beginning and sometimes it does plateau for a little bit. So most people want to know what can you do to break through. I'm going to give you seven strategies that you can try to break through that weight loss plateau. So the first thing you can try is to change up the foods that you're eating. One of the biggest problems we see in our clinic is the sweeteners. So try cutting them out. So most people know that sugar isn't very good for you. But a lot of people think, oh, well, why don't I have a diet soda? It doesn't have sugar, it doesn't have carbs, and there's no calories, so it must be okay, right? It sounds very logical, but it doesn't really work in real life. And it's not clear why. It's probably because the sweetness actually makes us want to eat more sweet foods or makes us hungrier. So if we're stimulating the appetite, then that's going to work against you, when you're trying to lose weight. It's going to make it really hard to do fasting. It's going to be really hard to stick to your diet if you're always going to be tempted by something sweet. When you cut out all the sweeteners, your palate adapts and then you get used to eating foods that are not sweet and sometimes you find that they're actually just too sweet. The second thing you can try to do is change your diet. And that sounds very strange. Because if you found a diet that's working for you that you're losing weight on, why would you want to change it? So this applies to all diets. So if you're uh, paleo, for example, well, the problem is you can't get more paleo if you're already paleo. So what you have to do is try and change it to something else because your body has obviously adapted to that diet and isn't losing weight anymore. You can always switch back later, but what it does is it changes things up so that your body doesn't get used to one thing and you might be able to just trigger that weight loss again because you're in a rut now and you want to make your body sort of um, be a little bit off balance so it doesn't get used to it. So number one and two are changing what we're eating. The third thing you can do is instead of changing what we're eating is to change when we're eating. So changing up your fasting periods. So intermittent fasting is a great way to lose weight, but there's lots of fasting variations. So what you can do is try to change your fast so that instead of uh, doing a fasting variation, you might want to do a little cleaner fast. So maybe you want to go to a water only fast or just herbal tea. Again, just something to shake things up. And the fourth thing that you can do is increase the duration of your fasting. And these two are changing the way that you fast. So you're changing your diet, what you're eating, and you're changing your fasting or how often you're not eating. So if you're used to doing a 16 hour fast, you can simply go up on the duration, change it to a 20 hour fast or a 24 hour fast. If you're used to doing um, a lot of longer fasts, maybe do a lot of shorter fasts, but more frequently. And it doesn't really matter what it is that you do. Again, you're just trying to keep your body off balance so that you're able to get out of a rut. Remember, nothing's set in stone. If you're doing worse with what you change, you can always change back. And the other thing you can do is if you're used to doing a certain type of fast, do a, a different type for a couple of weeks and then switch back to your usual and you might just find that you've gotten through. Uh, a couple of the strategies that we find that a lot of people haven't tried 
are going up to the 36 hour fast. So you're going through a full day of fasting. That is if you ate dinner, for example, on Monday at 7 p.m. and you don't eat until Wednesday at 7 a.m., that's a 36 hour fast. But the power of that is that you've got those two periods of sleeping where you're almost getting that fat burning period for free. And sometimes that's enough to jog yourself out of that rut and get that weight coming down again. Those first four strategies were focused on changing our diet and our fasting, what we're eating and when we're eating. But you might be surprised that in our clinic, we find that there's a lot of other reasons why people might get stuck in a rut. And one of the biggest things is stress. Stress causes all kinds of bad problems, but stress also causes certain hormones to go up such as cortisol and if you have chronic stress over a long period of time, that can also make you gain weight. That's the, the reason cortisol or its synthetic variants such as prednisone can cause weight gain. So if stress is a big reason why you're sort of in a rut, then you need to focus on dealing not just with the diet, but also with the stress. So number six, one of the biggest problems we see once again is Sleep. Make sure you get some sleep because if you're sleep deprived, you're gonna really have a lot of trouble losing weight. This is a big problem for many of us because we don't sleep properly and there's a whole a lot of videos as to what happens to your body as you sleep. Essentially, you're getting, you're resting your brain, you're consolidating your memories and that is going to allow your stress levels to come down. Try to make sure that you don't stay in bed if you're not sleepy. The worst thing you can do is just lie in bed and look up at the ceiling and think, I can't sleep, I can't, I can't, I can't sleep. So make sure that you're sleepy when you, when you go to bed. Some people think, oh, well, I should go to bed at 10 o'clock, but if you're not sleepy, you don't wanna lie in bed for two hours. It's called cleaning up your sleep hygiene. For many of us, it's getting enough sleep that can really make a difference to your weight as well. The sixth thing is also about stress and we always think that uh, dealing with stress is a passive thing. That is, oh, you should lie in front of the TV and you're going to relax. That's actually not the way it works. Relaxation is actually an active process and there's lots of ways to reduce that stress. One of the best is meditation. So there's the classic transcendental meditation. Um, not a lot of people do that anymore, but it is very effective. But there's all different ways of moving meditation as well, which is basically trying to still the mind. So something such as yoga or tai chi, very popular. Or hanging out with friends, talking to people, being part of a movement, helping other people. Those are all behavior, emotional ways to uh, relieve stress. And they're very important because human touch, sense of community is a really important part of what it means to be us. If you don't relieve the stress, then your stress levels go up. You're going to do things like stress eating and then your weight is going to go up. And that is also a big problem. The best, one of the best ways to get rid of stress in addition to these sort of uh, moving meditations and meditations is exercise. So exercise has a lot of benefits. Weight loss generally is not one of them, but in this case, sometimes you can use high intensity exercise to help yourself break through that plateau. And this is actually what uh, our body is designed for. The reason our cortisol goes up because in the days of uh, prehistoric days, when we're under stress, it is usually some kind of survival threat. So if we saw a lion, our stress would go up because it's gonna eat us. So our body floods with energy and then we run very fast or we fight. It's called the fight or flight response. In either case, that high intensity exercise is what relieves the stress. 
Now stress is different. It tends to be chronic. Uh, you have worries about money, worries about mortgage payments, worries about uh, you know your kids or your spouse or your parents or whatever it is. These don't go away, but the way to relieve them, exercise is still an excellent way. So all of these factors are ways that you can um, use to think about to break through that weight loss plateau and they're all to do with stress. So there you have it. These are seven different ways and you can think of them and what you can do in terms of changing your diet, changing your fasting and managing your stress. And if you can do those things, you can certainly break through that weight uh, plateau and move on to the next stage. So what's Chuck's best tip? Well, Chuck, when he started fasting, was terrified. He was worried that this would be the worst thing he could do, he couldn't do it, but he just dove right in. He started just by skipping breakfast. Then it wasn't so bad, so then he went to skipping lunch a couple of days a week, and then he followed up with a 48 hour fast and then at the end of the month he thought hey maybe a three day fast but by changing the fasting duration each time he's able to keep his body a little bit guessing and the weight kept coming off and now he likes to do some longer fasts through the year maybe five to seven days and by understanding the physiology of what's happening during fasting he's able to keep from bolting in terror. Chuck's best tip is make hunger your friend because you're not going anywhere without him. What he means is that the hunger is always going to be there, whether it's a physical hunger or a psychological hunger for the food. So learn that it's going to be there and embrace it as a friend and think to yourself when you get hungry, hey, this just means that I'm on the right track. That's it for this week. Uh, if you learned something, share it with your friend. Maybe they'll learn something too. And if you enjoyed it, well, do me a favor and just go ahead and hit that like button, the one that looks like this. And I'll see you next time.